Hello everyone and hope you are doing great. So today we are going to see the starting point of lean methodology. Many times uh, people are asking me in the organizations, there is so much things to do in lean uh, uh, methodology. There is uh, 5S, there is Kaizen, there is Gemba, uh, there is uh, WOT, so many things to do in lean and lean is now certainly the in the thing today in the corporate world because uh, considering the uh, cutthroat competition and the lack of resources and uh, because of this pandemic uh, companies are uh, not doing great because of uh, sales are going down so uh, the whole pressure has come on the cost cutting cost cutting and cost cutting that means use of less and less resources to reduce the cost of production and the cost of uh, services. So here comes, when, when you talk of uh, the use of less and less resources, here comes the Mr. Lean methodology. Now the question uh, that arises when you start implementation Lean is, from where do I start? There are so many things in Lean. Just in time, Gemba, Kaizen, there are so many terms. From where do I start, especially for a new process? For a new process, where is the starting point? From where should I start? So we will see what is the starting point of lean methodology, from where you should start. Well, to set the ball rolling and to create a very good base, a very good foundation for the rest of the lean methodology implementation program in your organization, you should always, always start the lean implementation methodology in your processes by 5S. 5S uh, methodology sets a very good platform in your processes uh, and creates a very good uh, foundation for the rest of the uh, lean methodology tools and philosophies. So today we will see the 5S implementation in your processes. The first step in lean, 5S methodology. Let's understand in detail what is 5S methodology. Let's play a game. You will see something uh, in front of your screen and you have to find out number one and number 81. Come on, come on, your time has started. Yes. Got it? No? <laughs> what happened? Why you had so much difficulty in finding out number one and 81? Everything was in front of you. Now you will say this is uh, unfair, this is cheating because the figures were rotating, uh, there was music, uh, God knows why, and uh, time was less. And on top of that, uh, you were mounting pressure by saying that you could find it or not, you could find it or not. So there was uh, utter chaos. There was utter chaos. That is why we could not find out. This is, we could not find out. This will be your explanation. Yes. So that means you do agree that because there is chaos, we cannot find what we are supposed to find. We leave the game here and we proceed further. We'll come back to this game again. Let's start with 1S. 5S methodology emerged from Japanese production approach after the Second World War. And that is why we will see that it uses Japanese words. The first S is called Seri, which in Japanese means to sort or to segregate. So what is this sort or segregate, what does it mean? Of course, we know the meaning of segregate and sort in English, but what does it have the meaning in our production system? 
So sort or segregate means to separate something from something. That means we are distinguishing certain items from each other with respect to a certain criteria. A postman, for example, in the post office segregates or sorts out the letters with respect to a certain criteria. So what is that criteria in the production system that will allow us or that we are supposed to use while distinguishing the items in the production system from each other? And that criteria is wanted or not wanted. That means, do you want this item in your production line or you do not want this item in your production line? That means, do you require this item in front of you online or you don't require this item in your production line? That's it. That is the question we are asking. And based on that, we will segregate the items on our workstation. So in the above two tools, what do you need in a barber shop? Obviously, you need the right one and not the left one. Now, after this, you are supposed to make a list of whatever items you have in front of you on the left hand side. And on the right side, you have to just put a cross or a tick mark. That means you will write in front of each item what is required and what is not required. Once you have completed this list, your 50% of 1S is complete. So once you have identified now what is required and what is not required, what are you going to do? Are you going to throw away all the items that are not required? That is one. Throw away out of the factory because that is not required in your workstation. Or another idea could be to throw them in some other workstation and make his workstation as chaotic in a mess. What are you going to do with items once you have identified them as not required? You don't have to throw them out of the factory. You don't have to throw them out of your workstation and make somebody else's workstation mess. So what you're supposed to do is the following the red tag method. So this is the red tag that you will use for the unwanted items that you want to remove from your production area. We will see this one by one in detail. So the first portion is the classification. You have to write tick mark, whether it's a file or any machine or any tool or any stationery. And then you have to write the name of that item, what actually it is. What is the quantity? 1, 5, 10. What's in brief the reason for uh, removing it from the production area? And what action one is supposed to take to remove it from the production? Uh, it can be given back to the store. It can be sent to the right workstation where it belonged. Or it can be scrapped. Maybe it's a scrap. Or it can be handed over back to the production process and production control team. And then who has, if, if it is the operator, uh, who has prepared the tag and who has taken the action? So this tag is prepared for attaching it to the unwanted item. So you will put this tag on the unwanted item. And then where this will go, all this will now move to the red tag area. Every organization that is compliant to 5S has a red tag area designated in either production area or in the stores area or wherever it is convenient for the operator or the person who is working in the workstation to shift the unwanted item to the 5S area. With that, we come to the end of 1S. So now we know that uh, when the 1S is complete, we now have only in front of us the wanted items. All the items now in front of our workstation are required. All the unwanted items, all the unrequired items are moved to the red tag area from where the supervisor 
of the production process team along with the quality will take a decision on what to do about these items whether they have to be sent to the store or scrap or they have to be uh, reworked but now your workstation is uh, clean of unwanted items what you have is only required only what is required to do your work on the workstation very well then so in one uh, s we have uh, removed we have identified first the unwanted items and then removed them using the red tag mechanism from our production line now what happened to that game we were playing so let us apply one s to the number game that we were playing and let's see now whether is it is easy for you to identify some numbers or not i will again give you some numbers and after implementing one s on those uh, game of numbers we will see whether it becomes easy for you this time or not from the coming array of numbers please tell me where is number 1 yes try to find number 1 now figures are not rotating it should not take much time the unwanted figures are gone yes this is the one you are absolutely right so why it happened why it was easy this time because there is no unwanted figures uh, the number of items are less on the work station and there is only what is required on the production line and that is why you could find very easily number 1 there is one uh, note of caution here 5s many times is uh, treated as a housekeeping tool 5s is never a housekeeping tool it's a philosophy to organize uh, your work area and uh, to have a sustenance in terms of the methodology of your work in the um workstation and uh, it is also a tool uh, to identify what is working properly in your workstation and not which process is working uh, better or not remember we were not able to identify number 1 or number 81 because there was chaos around so uh, we we were not able to understand what's wrong here only when i told you there is music and the figures are rotating and you then you could uh, appreciate that yes uh, there was something wrong in the process of identification of the number 1 so similarly uh, same things happen in your production line and um, you are not able to identify what's wrong uh, when uh, you don't implement uh, 5s so this is the toolbox of a construction site worker who looked to me very uh, stressed out so i told him to show me the box and this is what i saw so i told him remove everything that you don't require and after removing i told him to keep the equipments on the floor what you need and what i saw was this this is almost the half of the things what he had in the toolbox so this was the reason for his stress 5s is a philosophy and a way to organize and sustain that means to maintain and manage the workplace in a disciplined way so that the efficiency productivity safety and environment can be improved coming on to second s now second s is called seiton seiton in japanese means to set in order let's see what to set in order so now uh, all you have in front of you in the production line or in your workspace um, workstation is all the wanted items that means you require them for your work 
Now the question is, what are we going to uh, do with these items? Uh, you just can't be keeping them anywhere. So in the second S, we give a designated place uh, where these items uh, need to be kept. And not only that you have to provide a designated uh, space, you have also to identify that place. So when you say identify that place, that means it should be clearly visible to an outsider who is not working on that station that uh, uh, this item has to be kept where. For example, if you have a spanner in your uh, work area and um, you require that, it should have a, a proper, regular, permanent place where that spanner has to be kept. And that space has to be identified, labeled, that this is the place for keeping the spanner. And it is in the second S that uh, you famously say that everything has a place and everything is in its place. So everything has a place to be kept and everything is in its proper place. So the misconception of the housekeeping uh, about 5S, which, which is very wrong, already explained to you before, actually comes uh, in second S, only in the portion of everything in its place, everything has a place and everything is in its place. So it is only in this uh, component of the whole 5S that uh, the housekeeping portion comes uh, and uh, it is here that people get uh, mistaken about the entire 5S being housekeeping, which is wrong. So uh, it's basically about uh, keeping the places in their permanent uh, locations and which are properly identified by labeling or uh, by color coding or uh, by signs and symbols. Set in order means that you arrange the items that are needed, of course, in the area and identify, that's very important, and identify them so that anyone can find them or store them. Set in order involves organizing the essential materials in the workplace, a place for everything and everything in its place. Let's see some examples. This is an example of designated place and identification. Here, all the tools are identified and labeled by their specifications in their respective designated places. This is another example wherein the spanners are identified by labeling on their number. That means their specifications. In this case, we see the identification and designated place done by different shape of jigs. For example, this spanner can never fit into this position. So we have locked in the designated places for each particular tool and also identified them by labeling. So what are the benefits? Anyone can find the items and store them. That means this guy is not necessary to work at that particular station. Then reduce waiting and motion wastes. So basically you are reducing the search time in your workstation or work area, which is one of the biggest uh, time losers in the motion study. Coming on to the third S which is called CISO. CISO in Japanese means to shine. So shine is the scheduled cleaning of the entire work area. So what is this scheduled cleaning of the entire work area? The purpose of cleaning your work area is to get rid of all dust and dirt with two objectives. So it's not just simply removal of dust and dirt, it's removal of dust and dirt with two objectives. And that is inspect as you clean your area. We'll see what to inspect. Inspect as you clean and find ways, find newer and newer ways
to keep the area clean. Uh, what is the core message behind this? We will see. Now this third S, which is called shine, does not mean this kind of shining everything that you have in front of you. Of course, one of the interpretation of uh, shine means keeping your area free of dust and dirt. Yes, but uh, the essence of the third S, the real core message of third S, which is shine, is, is inspecting while cleaning, which means that, uh, for example, if you are cleaning a machine, you must also inspect uh, for any leakages, any uh, signals of bad behavior, if any indicators are going from green to red. Uh, so you have to basically get a feel of the health of the system that you are operating. If you are operating a machine or if you are uh, uh, doing some assembly on the assembly line, uh, whatever you have uh, the work in your station, you must inspect all the tools and machines while cleaning. So obviously it has the meaning of uh, keeping your area free of uh, dust and dirt, but uh, that is not the uh, completeness of uh, third S. It means you have to uh, inspect as you clean. For example, when you uh, clean, uh, you will definitely uh, sometimes open up things for cleaning. So when you open up things, you must see at that time uh, if everything is okay, uh, there is no, uh, there is no uh, uh, short circuit of wires or, I mean, I'm just speaking my mind. So these, these, are the, these are the examples that you must see, you know, when you open up because for cleaning, you will definitely uh, do a non-routine job of opening up things. And uh, here comes the message of inspect as you clean. For example, if I am uh, an assembly operator and uh, I am doing, uh, let's say, a screw tightening. I'm doing a screw tightening by an electric screw screwdriver, which is hung above me. So I'm pulling that screwdriver and uh, driving the screw in a component uh, while doing assembly. So when I come to the floor, I must clean my uh, screwdriver, the electric uh, screwdriver. And when I am cleaning, I should see whether the wire is okay. There is no cut in the wire. My uh, uh, tool tip is okay. Uh, I must uh, check the torque level. Is it uh, maintained at the right torque setting? Uh, because in the previous shift, uh, somebody might have uh, changed the torque setting uh, for driving the screw. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing uh, basically an intelligent cleaning. So I think that's the right word. You should do intelligent cleaning. When you just clean uh, li 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 like a sweeper, uh, <laughs> that is not shine. So shine technically means inspect and uh, as you clean. And if you find any abnormality, uh, which is away from the standard, immediately you have to inform your superiors. Or sometimes uh, in the work instruction in front of you, you already have uh, what to do if there is a uh, abnormality. So if the wire is cut or if the tool is uh, blunt, the tool is not in the proper shape, maybe no need to ask the supervisor. There is a reaction plan in front of you on the, uh, on the work instruction that you have to change the tool, uh, which is already available, I mean, tools are already available in front of you and you need to change that tool. So what I'm doing is I'm shining the area in terms of uh, the knowledge that I'm gathering about the health of the system I'm operating. So that is the meaning of shine inspection as you clean. Uh, that is part A. Uh, there is uh, another part B, to the uh, shine, and that is when you are doing the cleaning uh, of your workstation, you must identify newer ways, newer ways to maintain, sustain that cleaning, because this is very important. 
you you are cleaning uh, these workstation and inspecting as you are cleaning in the start of the shift but uh, during the mid of the shift everything goes bad so and you can't be cleaning all the time you you are you you are being hired not to clean you are being hired to produce so uh because you are the owner of the workstation you know the ins and outs outs of the workstation you must uh, uh, innovate yourself and uh, think of newer ways of um maintaining or sustaining that cleaning for example if you um if you open up something for cleaning and you see that uh, indicator is uh, showing on the poor performance maybe you can put a color coding just an example maybe you can put a color coding that if the needle comes here i don't have to go very near to it and open up the glass and see from from outside i can see that the needle has reached uh, the red level so uh, what i have done is i did inspection while cleaning and then part b i devised a method on how to sustain how to maintain uh, that cleaning this is the essence of uh, the shine which is in third s okay back to our number game no we are not going to leave this number game unless and until we fully learn the concept of 5s so we come back to this number again and uh, but before that we implement one more s on this number game that we have learned till now we will see now whether it is easier and much more faster to find what you are supposed to find all right then find number 11 Yes it's easy this time much more easy this is it definitely why it was easy this time because the numbers were given some designated places shown by the lines these lines so it became easy for you to locate now the numbers were not randomly placed just about anywhere coming on to the 4s which is called siketsu which in japanese means a standardization this comprises of basically consolidating whatever you have done in one s which is sort second s which is set in order and third s which is shine so all past practices done in one s two s and three s have now to be converted into a uniform standard for everybody to follow and why do we need a uniform standard for all the reason is because it has to be followed by all it is not somebody's uh, personal uh, objective and standards are the most easy method to communicate to everybody besides there is no confusion also for a new operator during his training when he comes to the uh, shop floor uh, whether after training or during training so what are the benefits uh, uh, first of all the role of everybody is defined who will do what and it is known and understood by everybody operating becomes in a consistent way it's not that today you do method 1 and tomorrow you do method 2 plus it is easy to understand and follow up it is easy to understand by the operator and it is easy to follow up by the management and as we have seen before it is very uh, convenient for uh, training the new employees who have no idea about your practices so if you have a standard you have to just hand over in the standard because uh, it is a uniform practice so it is much much easier to train a new employee how can you standardize you can standardize by formulation of policies and procedures here we are talking of policies and procedures that are pertaining to the 5s sops that is standard operating procedures can be made which incorporate the five s objectives the workflow charts are an easy and a faster method for an operator to understand besides 
they do not have any language barrier. So in cases where the operator is not able to understand the flowcharts, pictorial procedures can be used. 5S standards can also be made using the color coding. For example, the red contains this type of liquid and the yellow color contains a particular type of liquid. Now here there is a word of caution. Here we are talking about procedures and work instructions for compliance of what? Of 1S, 2S and 3S. Please do not take these uh, standards and procedures for the operational procedures. Although a good practice is to combine the operational procedures and the operational standards with the 5S procedures and standards. 5S. In Japanese, it is called Shitsuki. This refers to self-discipline. So last but not the least, this last 5S is very, very important. I have seen in many companies uh, 5S system failing just because people think that, okay, it's self-discipline, we have self-discipline, and they don't take this fifth S seriously. But uh, I tell you from my experience, all the previous four S collapse if this fifth S is not followed. So we need to get the self-discipline to perform the four S that we have studied till now on an ongoing. Ongoing means it has to be on continuous basis. It's not that uh, today you perform four S and tomorrow you are back to square one. And systematic basis. Systematic basis means first you have to implement 1S, then 2S, then 3S, and so on. What are the tools that will help an organization to get the self-discipline required for the 5S implementation? We have checklists. We can have a checklist for each activity in terms of the 5S so that the operators can do a self audit. Then we have audits done by the external teams, that means outside the department or by the management, just to ensure that the checklists are adequate and they are being followed. Employee trainings on the awareness of the 5S and the ease of operation that it's going to give to them is very important. And finally, uh, Oh, this 5S philosophy will collapse if you do not have the management support. The management has to uh, demonstrate a leadership and uh, support to the operations for 5S uh, in terms of the involvement and uh, reward and recognition given to the people who are compliant with uh, 5S or the departments who are compliant with 5S. Uh, just for the sake of compliance, uh, if uh, the management has uh, an approach, uh, I'm sorry, 5S is not going to work. One good practice that goes a long way in uh, creating a self-discipline in the employees is to create a 5S board uh, in various departments. Now, this board can have various informations uh, on the 5S implementation. Uh, for example, it can have uh, the results of the last audit done. It can have uh, the new uh, 5S practices identified by the department. And it can also have uh, who will do what in terms of the responsibilities of the 5S and so on. So this is a very good way of uh, communication and spreading awareness in terms of the self-discipline of the uh, organization. Okay, back to our number game. No, we are not going to leave this number game unless and until we fully learn the concept of 5S. So we come back to this number again, again. And, uh, but before that, we implement one more S on this number game that we have learned till now. And after implementation one of one more S on this number game, we will see now whether it is easier and much more faster to find what you are supposed to find. All right, the number game once again. And now you see uh, the shift from where we started without any S, numbers rotating and full chaos. And now you look at 
where we have reached and the ease of the ease of operation that we have attained now life becomes so much simpler tension free and uh, it's a place of uh, fun to work So hope you enjoyed this video like every time. See you until next time.